Hey, good morning, Hope Fellowship family. Thank you for joining us today and Merry Christmas. We're just so blessed that you would take time out of your Christmas to join your faith family online. My name is Daniel. I'm the communications pastor here at Hope. We're about to hear a devotional from Pastor Mark, but before that, we have one quick announcement, and that is that Next Sunday, January 1st, the new year, New Year's Day, we are not having in-person services. We just really wanted to bless our volunteers with the holiday and another Sunday of rest with their loved ones. So join us online on Facebook or YouTube at our regular service times of 9 and 11. With that said, here is Pastor Mark and two of his granddaughters with today's devotional. Hey. Merry Christmas and thank you for joining us today. Thanks for carving out a little bit of your day to share with us in the Christmas story and then some reflections on that story as well. So today I have with me two of my granddaughters. Uh, I have Emma, who is my oldest, and Abigail, who is my second oldest. And so what we wanna do is we wanna start with a very familiar story to you and that is the, from the Gospel of Luke. And it is what we know to be as the Christmas story. So my granddaughter, Emma, is going to actually recite the story for you. And then I'd like to share some comments. Then we'll have a prayer time and then let you get back to your day of enjoying your family. So Emma, go for it. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married with him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy to all the people. In the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Very good. That's great. Yeah, thank you. We can give her, yay, good job. Great job, Emma. Thank you so much. And so we wanted to start with that story because it is absolutely so impactful for us at this time of Advent. Because when we look at this story, it is a fulfillment of a promise that God made to us back in the book of Genesis at the very beginning when Adam and Eve first sinned. And so God said that he would come at an appointed time and he would fix the brokenness of our world. And he would do that by sending someone in the flesh. And so we know that that is a promise that God made in Genesis 4,000 years before the coming of Christ. So it made me think, okay, and I ask you guys this question, right? You know, why did God wait 4,000 years to fix what was broken in our world? And, and it's a big question, right? Yeah, and, and I think that we can read a lot about it and there's really no specific answer for it, but that mankind was ready for the Messiah. God has always been ready to save us and redeem us, but mankind in the world was ready for the Messiah at the appointed time. So I gave it some thought. And I thought, if I were God, I don't know, have you ever had a thought if you were God, what you would do? Yeah. yeah, have you really? Okay. And so if I were God, then what would I have done? And I thought, well, if I were God, then I would probably had sent the Messiah right after the flood with Noah, because there would have been only one really dysfunctional family for Jesus to come and redeem, right? Mm -hmm. would, it wouldn't be the whole world like us. So then one family. So I thought, well, that would have been a good time. And then the second thought was that, well, God could have come after the children of Israel left Egypt. You guys remember the story of the children of yes. E yes. Israel in Egypt? Yes. And yes. we know that Moses led them out into the desert, the wilderness, but they complained the whole time. They were complaining all the time. And so that would have been a great time for God to come and stop their complaining by sending the Messiah. But yet he waited at the appointed time. I think what we have to realize is that, first of all, we know God never makes mistakes, right? And because of that, history 
doesn't frame itself necessarily uh, on its own. God is the one that frames history. So history flows from the power of God. So God had an appointed time. In the book of Daniel, it says to us that it is God who changes the times and the epics, and he removes kings and established kings. So what that says to us is this, that kings and nations rise and fall on God. That is the thing that we have to realize. So God, in his perfect timing, even though he makes a promise to us 4,000 years before in the book of Genesis, God, in his perfect timing, sends Jesus at the very right moment. And the entire time, those 4,000 years, what is God doing? What is God, what do you think God was doing those 4,000 years? Any thoughts? Can I tell you? You want to know? He was thinking about Emma and Abigail. That's exactly what he was doing. He was thinking about Emma and Abigail is, is exactly what, because the entire time, God's mind is on us, okay? God's mind is, is on us. Let me read a text to you from the book of 2 Timothy for a moment, okay? And here's what it says. Who saved us, talking about Christ, and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. So here's what this is saying to us. That even before God created the earth in the book of Genesis, he was already thinking of Emma and Abigail. That you were already on his mind before the earth was even created. God's intention was always to save you because that is the magnitude and the majesty of the love of God for you and I. And so that's what God does for us, for Emma, for Abigail, for Papa, for everybody. That we have all we were on God's mind for 4,000 years. And so God was planning and preparing to send his son for you and I. And here's the thought. He did all that planning knowing who we are. Knowing that we are rebellious at times, right? Knowing that we're imperfect. Knowing that we sin. Knowing that our world is broken. All the time that God is preparing to send his son, he knows us. He knows us. So I thought, well, how do we talk about that for a moment? So let me give you a little kind of story. And I'm going to build a story around Emma and Abby. Okay. So it's Christmas morning and you bought gifts for each other, right? All right. Okay. Do you get gifts for each other? Yes. You do. Okay. So here's what you do. So Abby goes out and gets your gift, Emma. And Abby spends a lot of money. She gets a very nice very expensive gift for you, okay? But you don't know what she's gotten because it's a gift, right? So you go out and you buy Abigail's gift, but you don't spend a lot of money and your gift is very small, okay? And so on Christmas morning, you get up and Abigail wants you to open her gift first, but you don't know what she spent. She doesn't know what she spent. You open her gift and man, you realize it's this really expensive, extravagant, very, very nice gift, right? And then the first thing that comes to your mind is what? I like it. No, yeah, you like it. That's okay. But what else? But what about your gift? That you didn't get her a good enough gift. You, ah, very good that you didn't get her a good enough gift. So you're kind of maybe apprehensive at first because she gave so much and you gave so little, right? You see, here's the point. That's the story of Advent. That's the story of Christmas. That God had always planned to give us so much and we had nothing to give back. That's the story of Christmas. That he sent his only son to die for us through the story that you recited. And yet our gift was nothing back to him. The 4,000 years that God was waiting between Genesis and the book of Luke to send his son, he knew we could never give anything back to him, and he still gave. That's the love of God on Advent, and that's why we celebrate this time together. So I think it's really important for us on this day to stop what we're doing, to take a moment, and to really focus on that truth. 
that we were always on God's mind as he waited those 4,000 years to send his son. And he knew that we could not give him a gift that equaled his, but yet he still loved us. That's Advent. Hey, thank you guys. You're such great help today. Thank you so much. You did a good job. High five. Yes, awesome. High five. Merry Christmas to both of you. Thank you. And we want to say to you guys before we pray, Merry Christmas from all the Gaskew clan, all of us from Mark and Reba and from Chad and Natalie and of course, Emma and Abigail, from Brad and Marcy, from Selah and Garrett and from Grayson. We want to say thank you. We love you and we hope that you have a great day. Hey, let me pray for you before we go in a moment. So let's pray together, okay? Father, thank you for this wonderful day and for Advent season. Thank you for allowing us to share with our friends today the story of Advent. That God, over 4,000 years, you were thinking of us to send your son for us. So thank you for that. Father, may that be the focus of the day and of the season of our life and how we treat others and how we love others and how we serve you. Thank you for that in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you, Merry Christmas and have a great day. Thank you again for joining us today on Christmas. Just before you go, I wanted to remind you again that next Sunday we will not have in-person services, but that you can join us online at our regular service times of nine and 11 on Facebook or YouTube. Also, if you would like to worship through generosity today, you can do so by visiting hopeandanderson.com slash give or by texting a dollar amount to the number on the screen. We hope that you have a Merry Christmas, a great rest of your day, and a Happy New Year. See you in 2023.